Praise the Lord, Brother J.P. Timmons here of Christ Church International. As we say down in Texas, how's your mom in them? Hope everybody's doing great today. We're finally getting some warm weather. I think the snow's gone. Unfortunately, the heat's being turned up in a lot of other areas. Our website's www.ccipublishing.net. And you can go on there and order books and Bibles and order our books that will help you in your Christian walk because they're all anointed by the Holy Spirit for a purpose, like you're created for a purpose. Well, if you write books for the Lord, if you're not writing them to make money, which we're not because all of it goes to the ministry to support the ministry, then they're anointed by the Holy Spirit if he directs you to write a book. And as I've said before, there are books in heaven. I've seen them in the libraries that haven't been written because no one's paid the price. And also, I don't want to forget to remind you that we're also on Rumble, rumble.com. Some of the videos that I know that YouTube would take down in a nanosecond because they censor your speech, uh, they're posted on Rumble. So you can go there. It's the Christ Church channel. And or you can put in JPT three four eight nine and it should bring it up. But it's Christ Church channel. And you'll see my smiling face there. Praise God. So are you feeling the flames? That's what we're talking about today. Are you feeling the flames? Our scriptures for this teaching is Daniel three, one through eighteen, six, one through ten, Isaiah thirty three, fourteen, forty three. 1b through 3a, Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 3, 66, 15 through 16, and verse 24, Psalm 66, 10 through 12, Hebrews 10, 26, and 12, 14, James 1, 1 through 4, 1 Peter 1, 1 through 7, and Revelation 13, 4 through 18 and 14, 9 through 13. So are you feeling the flames yet? I said, uh, can, I, can I get an amen? If not, just wait a while. Because both God and Satan are turning up the heat in this world. And there's a separation taking place. There's a separation taking place. You know, the man that, it was a divine appointment where our ministry was birthed into West Africa, into specifically Benin City, Nigeria, through Pastor Edward Romacoro, who came to our church in Houston, Lakewood Church, when we had a, a minister conference every year. And uh, it was the will of the Lord. And so I met, I met him, and it was, it was an amazing encounter. I won't go into all the details, but it was a divine appointment. And I took him back to Austin because we were living in Austin at the time and set up some churches for him to minister in. And one night we were sitting there in our living room talking. He began to tell me a testimony that was so interesting. When he was 12 years old, he was a heathen. He wasn't born into a Christian family like a lot of people, especially in Benin City that's called the City of Blood. A lot of deep witchcraft, a lot of, uh, it's a very demonic place where the demons and witches will kill you if you don't know what you're doing spiritually. But he sat there and told me, he was 12 years old, he didn't, he'd never heard of a Bible, never heard of Jesus Christ, and he starts telling me this dream he had. And in the dream, he said he was walking along this road, and all of a sudden, everything the tree started to crash and, and he saw automobiles crashing and, and, and uh, he saw these angels come down, balls of light, and they turned into angels. and They began to arrest people. In other words, they grabbed someone by the arm and he said they were taking them to this huge hall. And he said, I was arrested and taken there. 
And he said we were in a long queue or line, as we'd say in America. And there was someone up ahead. Of, he said the light was so bright you couldn't look at him. But he knew it was a figure sitting on a throne. And he was going left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And the hair stood up on the back of my neck. He, he gave a, a perfect example of the sheep and goat judgment. And that's what led him to become a Christian and later on into the ministry. And it also fulfilled something the Lord showed me when I was over there, that when God took me to the lake of fire and said, I speak to all men. That was an example of the Lord speaking to all men. And, you know, we would expect that. He's a righteous judge, and we expect everyone to have a chance to receive him and receive the eternal gift of salvation, but um, it was it was it was awesome, and, and we're getting close to that time. You know, he's gone on to be with the Lord. Praise God! I'm looking forward to seeing him in heaven. He was a wonderful man. There's so much corruption in the ministry in Nigeria. So much corruption, but he was a pure man, and and he prayed. He'd be up three o'clock in the morning praying until six or praying all night, or and uh, he was a wonderful man of God, but the Lord gave him that dream of the sheep and goat judgment. And so God and the devil are turning up the heat, and there's a separation taking place, and World War III is on the horizon. I believe we're in the Ezekiel 38-39 war. I believe that from October when they were invaded and we're, we're waiting to see other things happen that will confirm that but now you know Iran's in the war we're still waiting on Ethiopia and other countries but I believe they're in the Ezekiel 38-39 war and we're on the brink of World War III over in Europe because of some dumb things that NATO has done and and uh things that are going on that make Putin feel threatened. And so, you know, we'll see. But um, it's very serious times and, and the heat's being turned up. And if you're not feeling the flames, you will. And although, although the Dow Jones stock market average hit a new record of 40,000 <clears throat> yesterday, the USA is facing the complete collapse of the financial system due to the inability of Congress to rein in spending. Most Americans are living from paycheck to paycheck with little savings for emergencies. Meanwhile, inflation is not abating, but is in fact getting worse. And you know that if you've been to the grocery store lately. Areas like food, energy, insurance, and rents. You know, see, those aren't included in their CPI index it excludes food and energy and, and things like rent, which has gone up 33% in the last year. So we're in serious times, and, and you're going to feel the flames if you haven't felt them already. So now let's begin in uh, Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, where the Lord says, through the prophet Isaiah, who was one of the greatest prophets of the Old Testament. He served under a lot of different kings. Amen. He says, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When, not if, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. And when, not if, when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Underline that in your Bible. See, when, when, the, when the fire gets really hot, you, you open your Bible there and you show that to the Lord. Lord, you said right here that, that I would not be burned nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Praise God. Now let's jump over to Isaiah 66. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, it's just a precept of God. We see it in the Scriptures that He, as David wrote in Psalm 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You're going to walk through it. God's going to be with you. Amen. It's so wonderful. Verses 15 and 16. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword, the Lord will judge all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. And then it says, those who sanctify themselves and purify themselves. And that is us. We need to be holy, pure people. So are you feeling the flames? Well, I have good news for you. It's time to look up for your redemption's drawing near. And his glory will be released upon you. Let's go back to Isaiah 60. Verses 1 through 3. Arise, shine. For your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. That's how this revival is going to take place. When, when everyone's confused and in and, and turmoil and, and you have peace in your heart because Jesus said, I leave you my peace. In the world you have tribulation, but I've overcome the world. Peace, I leave my peace with you. And so you'll have peace. You should have it now. And people will look at you and, and the glory of the Lord will rise upon you. And as I've told you for, I don't know, it was six months ago, I think it was, that the Lord said to me, when the church returns to holiness, the move of glory will be poured out in its fullness. When the church returns to holiness, the move of glory will be poured out in its fullest. Rise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. Oh, people are so, so full of darkness today, so full of darkness. And they don't know what to do, and they need a word from the Lord, and you'll give it to them. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your coming. Praise God. Praise God. So Jesus is coming back very, very soon. Evie and I have sensed in our spirits for some time now that we're coming out of, that we're running out of time. And whatever we're going to do for God, we must do quickly because darkness is coming when no one can work, as Jesus said, we must work while it is, it is light. For darkness comes when no one can work. So we must do it quickly. You need to be prepared lest you be left behind. Now you might say, well, I'm a Christian, Brother Timmons. Maybe you are, maybe you aren't. The Holy Spirit came upon me mightily one night after dinner in 1998 when I was living in Ellison, Montana, and he said, quote, many thought they were safe and secure, but they were cast into outer darkness, period, close quote. Now let's go back to Isaiah 33. Sure is hot in here. I think I'm starting to feel the flames. <laughs> We need a fan on in here. <laughs> Isaiah 33. Verses. Verse 14. The sinners in Zion. No, that's not right. Thirty-three, fourteen. 
Who among us, it was B, who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? Are you able to dwell with the devouring fire? You can't unless you're holy. Unless you're holy. If not, if you're not a living a holy life, then you better get right with the Lord right away lest you be counted among the unbelievers. Remember, and I've been warning you on here for a long time, you can deny Jesus Christ by how you live your life. The Apostle John warns us in 1 John that, quote, he who sins is of the devil, close quote. So stop sinning and live a holy life. You know, Isaiah said, I, the Lord gave me that scripture when I, <clears throat> Pastor Andrew and from Africa and I ministered at this church in Michigan and the Lord had given me that scripture and I didn't, I, I didn't think it could be for that church, but it was. In uh, 1 Kings 17, why, why halt between two opinions? If Baal's God, serve him. But if Jehovah, serve him. Don't see how close to the edge you can live, my brother and sister. You're not promised tomorrow. If you're living in sin, the devil could kill you tonight and you'll go to hell. So stop sinning. Stop sinning. Hebrews, the book of better things. We're going to read 10.26 and 12.14. 10.26, For if we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and what fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. So stop sinning. Repent, repent. And don't sin willfully. You're in danger of hellfire. It tells you right here. You know, I was taught as a Baptist that uh, once you're saved, you're always saved, but it's not true. It's Lots of scriptures, I'm reading two of them right now, that, that refute the doctrine of eternal security. You're secure as long as you stay in Christ and you live a holy, righteous life. But if you live, live a sinful life, you'll be found among the goats. 12, 14. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one, underline that, no one, will see the Lord. No one. And you know, yesterday during my Bible reading and meditation, the Lord showed me that the prayer Jehoshaphat prayed in Second Chronicles 20 would work for Israel today. You know, I don't have any contacts in Israel. I had some rabbis years ago, but I don't any longer. But if you have some contacts in Israel, if you could pass this along to them, that the prayer he prayed will work for Israel today because they need God to fight for them in this war. And the prayer and it's the same people trying to take their land as there was way back then. You know, the devil never gives up, but neither should we. Unfortunately, Israel probably won't pray that prayer, but if you do know some Jewish peoples, then pass this along to them. They don't have to fear all the armies that are coming against their land because the Lord will fight for them. Just read Ezekiel 38, 39. You'll see that God fights for them. Let's turn back to Daniel chapter 3. It's a very interesting similarity here because the, the times of the Gentiles began when Daniel was in, when uh, 
Jerusalem was taken captive by the Babylonians and Daniel was in you know, with Nebuchadnezzar there in Babylon. And Nebuchadnezzar erects this statue and the times of the Gentiles will end with a statue being erected by the Antichrist. Isn't it interesting? And with a command to worship, fall down and worship that statue or you know, receive the mark of the beast and worship the beast and or they'll they cut your head off, they'll kill you. And that's coming pretty soon, as I've said for about ten years now. I feel like it's coming this this decade. So you need to be ready. Daniel chapter three, verses one through eighteen. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was sixty cubits. That's ninety feet high. And its width, six cubits. It's nine feet wide. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. And King Nebuchadnezzar sent word to gather together the satraps, administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So the satraps, administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces gathered together for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, in symphony with all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship. Fall down and worship. Fall down and worship the gold image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. That's a lot of fire. Are you feeling the flames yet? We're not quite to this point yet, but it's coming. So at that time when all the people heard the sound of the horn, flute, harp, and lyre, and symphony, with all kinds of music, all the people, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the gold image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews they spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, in symphony with all kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the gold, the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, sounds like somebody in uh, Washington today, doesn't it? Gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abed Abednego. So they brought these men before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? Now, if you're ready at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, and symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made good, but if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hand, from my hands? Well, he's fixing to find out, isn't he? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered. They didn't, that, I didn't say, well, I have to pray about this, you know. I, I sure don't want to die. I better go home and pray. I mean, God doesn't want me to die. He's, he's got me here for a purpose. You know, I, he probably wouldn't mind if I just, you know, bowed down one time and no, they answered immediately. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, 
We have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Ooh, that made him mad, didn't it? And Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face changed towards Shadrach. Me, he wasn't expecting that reply, was he? He wasn't expecting them to, quote, commit suicide. And he commanded to heat, to heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. I think they were probably feeling the flames by then, don't you? And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They felt the heat. They felt the flames. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Praise God, praise God. You know, Paul talked about scriptures like this that are written for our admonition upon whom the end of the ages have come. You know, we got to be strong because the flames are the flames are being turned up. There's a separation taking place. There's a separation taking place. You've heard me say it. Many Christians are going to be left behind and they're going to take the mark of the beast. They're Christians now, but they're going to take the mark of the beast and then they're damned for all eternity. That's what the scripture says. And that's not God's intent. Amen. Now let's go back to 1 Peter 1.7. 1 Peter 1. First Peter 1, I mean. 1 Peter 1. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You know, the Apostle Peter denied the Lord, but then fortunately he had a personal prophecy from Jesus that he was going to turn again. It's probably what kept him from committing suicide. And praise the Lord. He was the one that had the revelation on the day of Pentecost, and he was the one who was a pillar of the early church. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ of the pilgrims of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, the elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope, 
through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Hallelujah. I can't wait. Who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, which is where we are. We're in the closing days of human history, my brother and sister, in case you haven't figured it out yet. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grievous, grieved by various trials. Why? That the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold, that perishes, though it is tested by fire, though it is tested by what? Fire. You've been tested by fire? If not, you will be. Right here. What's the purpose? To refine you. To get out all the impurities. Refine you. Purify you. Purify you. Though it's tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Praise God. So, Satan attacks us. He brings things upon us. God uses it for our good, but he'll use it very often as a test in a trial, the trial being from Satan, but God uses it to Romans ten twenty eight. All things work together for good. You have to look for the good. You can see it right there. It's more precious than gold, your trial. We see over here in Psalm 66, 10 through 12, one of our scriptures. For you, O God, have tested us. You have refined us as silver is refined. You brought us into the net. You laid affliction on our backs. You have caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. There we see it again, fire and water. But you brought us out to rich fulfillment. Praise God, praise God. Listen, my brother and sister, you have these promises, these exceeding great and precious promises, as Peter said. Look for them when you're in a trial. We're all going to be in trial these last days. Look for the Holy Spirit to comfort you and to and to look for that rich fulfillment that you're being brought out into. I'll tell you, it's 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 awesome. Look and look how much stronger your faith's getting. You know, if your faith's not tested, it doesn't get stronger. Just remember, God is for you. He's not against you. Amen. Know that God is for you. So God knows the condition of your heart. He knows whether you've placed Him as number one in your life. Trials and temptations are allowed to test us and refine us. You can only be refined in the fire. So I believe the Lord wanted me to give you this teaching to encourage you so that you know the Lord is with you during difficult times. They're going to get more and more difficult in the days ahead. And the trial of your faith will be more precious than gold. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You know, I've told you a lot of things in the past. I've told you, I've told you, even though I'm not a not a financial advisor, I've recommended that, or I've said, you know, you should. I mean, like ten, fifteen years ago, you should buy some gold and silver, and and uh, I believe that. Uh, that the economy is going to there's going to be another crash. Well, I know the Lord showed it to me in 1990, but I believe that the only way out of the debt crisis that we're in is for them to devalue the dollar. And I felt like I think it was about a year ago I told a few people clo close my some of my spiritual sons and a few close people that they were going to devalue the dollar might maybe by as much as 50 percent. I don't know when. If I had to guess, I would say probably right before the election, 
but I don't have a thus saith the Lord on when it's going to take place, but I believe it's going to take place. And so you need to be prepared. You know, you need to prepare for these things, but you don't need to be concerned because the Lord's obligated by covenant to provide for you. And he will provide, and he's going to provide through the gift of working of miracles. I mean, he showed us that years ago. He showed Evelyn and I when he talked to us about the famine that's coming. Because famine's coming, you know, that's the other thing. You need to stock up on food, food that'll last. Because famine's coming. And um, we see here in Revelation 13 again, they worship the dragon who gave authority to the beast and they worship the beast saying, who is like the beast who is able to make war with him? And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle and those who dwell in heaven. And it was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with a sword must be killed with a sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Then I now saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, but he spoke like a dragon. Pretty easy to interpret, isn't it? And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed, and he performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Then we have that fire again. Remember, Satan's turning up the fire too, but we won't be deceived. You shouldn't be deceived by this. <clears throat> Telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast and that the image both spoke and caused as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. And of course, six is the number of man, and the fact that it's three times is perfect. And people said, well, what is 666, and who is it? And they, uh, that just means a perfect man. It's Satan's perfect man. Three perfect, six man. Amen. And then in chapter 14, verses 9 through 13, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works will follow them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, we're coming into these last of the last days, my brother and sister. You need to be prepared. You know, don't, 
Don't take it lightly. It's like Jesus said in the days of Noah and in the days of Lot. They were eating and drinking. In other words, life was just, it was just going on like every, you know. I mean, it's, it's not. Life's not normal. You, you, if you're spiritual, you know, you pick it up in the spirit. Things aren't the same. Things aren't the same. Normally, you might, you know, I might plan a vacation, expensive vacation, five years from now. I'm not doing that now. Time is short, very short. And we need to be prepared. You need to prepare yourself physically because we don't know when the Lord's going to return, but it's very soon. And most of all, you need to be prepared spiritually. That means you repent of any sin in your life and you stay out of sin and you lead a holy, righteous life. Amen? Praise God. Brothers and sisters, Hope you'll pass this message along to people. We want to see as many people as possible get into the ark, the ark of safety, which is Jesus Christ. And you can have them write us at Christ underscore church underscore INT at yahoo.com. Our website again, www.cci.publishing.net. And you can also find us on rumble.com at the Christ Church channel. You have a blessed day in Jesus' name. Amen.